Hey everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, um, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. Um, tonight, I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, how I use a recorder resource, how I use it with a whole class, how I use it with small groups, and how I use it in centers. And I'm just going to sort of share how that process works um, because it's the week after spring break and we're doing recorders and we're sort of advancing on to more exciting stuff. And so I wanted to share how you can use this resource in a variety of ways. Okay, so before I get to that, um, if you hear about anything exciting or fun or interesting that you like in this video, um, you can check out on my blog, makemomentsmatter.org. There's a page dedicated to all the links and things that I talk about in here. So I'll post the link to this resource if you're interested and anything else I talk about. Um, in any of these videos, it goes there on the links page. Also, if you're watching on Facebook or listening to this as a podcast, wherever you are experiencing this video slash podcast, you should be able to find a link at the bottom of the description to just take you directly there. Um, okay, a couple more things. If you are um, interested in continuing on the conversation and you're on Facebook, there's a Facebook group called Every Moment Matters Music Education Community. You can come and join us um, and talk more about music ed, learn more together, ask questions. It's a great place to um, connect with other folks. Um, if you are going to be in Austin, Texas, or surrounding area this weekend, I'm going to be there this Saturday um, in Austin from 9 to 1 with the uh, Capital Area um, ORF chapter and um, sharing a workshop there. So if you're interested and you're around, we'd love to have you. Um, it's going to be all about improvisation. Um, scaffolding the steps that it takes the things that you might want to do to make sure that your students are successful um all the time with improvisation whether it's a small thing to a big thing to whatever so if you're around come join us we'd love to have you and you can find more information about that on my website makemomentsmatter.org or just google search capital area or and uh austin texas and you'll pull it all up and you can uh, sign up for that Okay, well, I'm excited to share about this resource, recorder resource, because we're doing recorders right now and we're getting to the point where um, students are going to get to start taking their recorder home. My rule for students is you cannot take your recorder home until you know three notes and two songs. You cannot take your recorder home before then. And so kids are like, the first day we learn three notes, they're like, this is going to go fast. Um, but I don't really call anything a song uh for for a couple of weeks so so i say to kids you can't take your recorder home until you know three notes and two songs and so we'll do like a, a like a an example in class or like a warm-up or a you know we'll, we'll work on something they're like is this a song it's like mm, this is fun but it doesn't count as a song i haven't given this one a title yet or like i'll have some reason why it can't count as a song because i want when kids take their recorder home finally i want them to feel confident on it and be excited about it and have something to share with their parents and i don't want kids to run home with their recorder and spend a whole weekend like making sounds after having just one class period and not really knowing how to make a good sound or just i don't want them to go and like um play around and feel unsuccessful. I want them when they go home to feel like they can play successfully, they can play something for their parents, they can show off a little bit, they can make some silly sounds, but they can also say like, you know what, I know how to fix this. So um, I got this idea from a, my friend Amy Fenton who teaches in Michigan, that she, she makes sure that before they take their recorder home, they have to play a couple notes and a couple songs and so like I we work through that together and then I, I give them the music to take home and I encourage them like okay now you're able to take it home this is so exciting so that's coming up very soon but before we do any of that we I make sure that they can play their three notes and honestly by this by the time they take it home they've played quite a few songs although like in name I've only like really played like two songs I actually the PE teacher one day she ducked her head and she's like, wow, that was such a great song. And the kids were like, that was a song. I was like, nope, that was not a song. That was just a practice. <laughs> because my rule is three notes and two songs. Anyway, so one of the things that I do in every class is, you know, we do a little bit of reading. We do a little bit of um, echoing. There's always some sort of choice improvisation sort of thing in there. And I wanted to share one of the, the resources I use that starts out sort of as a warm up. It starts up as something that we work together as a, as a group and then becomes sort of a small group thing and then can be transferred to centers. So my students um, at this point um, are just playing B, A, and G on the recorder. So I got my recorder here. And, you know, when they come in, um, 
I could talk about procedures and all that. I'm not going to get into that today. But when they come in, they get the recorder, they play a little bit. We do a couple things, and then um, we, we play some things together. So they get a little bit of time to play on their own. They get a little bit of time to play with me. They play with partners. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of different ways that they experience the recorder just in that just in one class but this is one of, one extra way that we try um, and I'm gonna try and see if my technology will work it never wants to work when I want it to work so let's see because I have like I have I'm gonna try and do like a fancy like document camera sort of thing so you can like see we'll see if it works <laughs> cross your fingers so you can like look down and see what I'm actually seeing okay we're gonna try this let me see if I can switch this over on my computer. Technology. Facebook folks, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Sorry, Facebook. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I don't know. This this new camera is being weird. Okay, sorry. Anyway, so on the 
on the melody. So I've looked at my task card and it has a purple piece with, or sorry, a purple card with a red puzzle piece, a yellow card with a pink puzzle piece, a blue card with a purple puzzle piece, and a pink card with a blue puzzle piece. And I've gone and I pulled out all those cards. So first for the purple one with a red puzzle piece, I've got G, A, or the other card says A, A, B. Okay, so I get to choose. I could choose G, A, or A, A, B. I think I'm gonna choose G, A, because that seems like a good way to start, because I'm gonna set this other card off the side. And then it says yellow card with a pink puzzle piece. Okay, there are a lot of choices here. So we have um, B, let's see, B, A, A. We have A, rest, or we have B, A, G. Ooh. Okay, since we started real calm with GA, I'm gonna go with this tricky one. I'm gonna do B, A, G, okay. And then I've got blue with a purple puzzle piece. Okay, I gotta go through and choose. So basically I go through this exact same thing with all of these cards and I let kids, uh, I, I let, well I come, this first time I will come through and I will choose. So let me see if I can choose an example. Okay, let's see. Let's end on this. So I, I basically do what we call a think aloud, which is uh, like going through and thinking through that process of like, why did I choose what I choose and how did I choose it? And the first time I will do that for them. So like this first line, purple with a red puzzle piece, yellow with, so I've matched basically my small cards to the task card. I've used these small cards where they get choices to make tasks, to match the task cards here. So. I went through, I did that, so now I get to go through in this little four card thing that I created, I get to try it out. So I've got, um, let me speak it first, G, A, B, A, G, B, A, G, G, B. Okay, that's very exciting. And then with my kids, they know that once they read through once, then they get to um, do the finger practice, which is like, uh, moving their fingers on the recorder as if they were playing, but they still say the notes. So my fingers are moving on the recorder and I'm saying G, A, B, A, G, B, A, G, G, B. Okay, let me try and play this. I'm very excited about this. I hope that this works. Let's find out. Ooh, very exciting, okay. I think that, ooh, cool, wow. See, technology is working so well for me today. I'm so, I love that this, this phone keeps shutting off. Ooh, okay, sorry everyone. Oh, see, now it's trying to, this is, see how well it's working? Not so well. Hello. I'm sorry, I hope I'm not making you all car sick. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, um, I basically I used the task card. I went through, I created. Um, I got to choose my little cards and then I played through. So let me play through that again. So what I've got, we'll see if I can do it right. Now, if they played through that correctly, perfect. If not, we'd probably play through it a second time, right? And then if I want, you know what? I've got all of these other cards of the same color. Let me just switch them out and see what happens. So I'm gonna leave the first one because why not? The second one was tricky for some people. So let me see. I'll change that one. I like this third one. Let's see what the last one could be. Now let's change it to that, okay. And then I go back to my process, read it. G, A, B, A, A, B, A, G, G, B. Okay, so let me play it then. Our finger practice, you know, go through it. And then I'll play it. So let's see what it sounds like. Ooh, what a, what a note to end on, oh my gosh. Bum, 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 how exciting is that? Like super exciting. So basically what I would go would do with kids though is the first time through, I would do this think aloud. I would like show them my process of choosing, creating, I'd go through and say, well, that was fun, but maybe what if I change them? What if I, you know, and what if I use one of my other options? What would that sound like? I walk them through um, and, I, and I sort of show exactly how that works. And then, oh my gosh, look, Row two. Ooh, do I get to keep any of these colors from before? No, they're all completely new colors. Okay, so let's see. 
that means that I've got my, you know, and so I walk them through what I would do in the second line. And I create, let me make a really fast creation version and show what I could make here. I'm just going to do random. Um, just pull the color and see what we get. First one I get. Okay. Because you could do that, you know, just pull the very first card you see of that color and see what you get. Let's see what we've got. G, A, G, A, G. A, 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 G, B. Ooh, wow. Let's do that with finger practice. So I go through, I try that with finger practice, and then I play. You know, and we might go, we'd probably go through that a couple times, right? And then we would decide if we want to change some things out. Let's see if I can find um, a more exciting orange card. Oh, that's definitely more exciting. I don't have another light blue card in this deck. Okay, let's see what we got. G, A, G, A, G, A, G, A, G, B. Okay, this first card, the green one, is fun, but oh, good. yeah, I want to change it out because I only have one B in that whole line, so I want to try again up here. Let's, so let's see what we got now. We've got. Woohoo! Okay, so that is very exciting. It's way more fun. So we can. It's fun to change out and try different stuff. So basically, we'd. I'd go through in the very first day. I would lead us through, and we would play through line one, maybe line two, and then probably I'd choose a student to come up and make some changes, make some choices, and just like see what else they can do, um, because this is a really fun activity when kids get to make these choices. Now, why is it not notes on the staff? Well, because when you're very starting out, you know, at first with um, like, you know, beginning readers or beginning recorder players, you're asking them to do a lot. So playing uh, hand-eye coordination, um, breath control, tone, um, dynamics, um, also following along in time, reading and playing. That's a lot of processes for the brain. To ask them to then read on the staff is even trickier. So basically we're just simplifying by giving them the rhythmic notation along with note names. Um, and then letting them play through and see what they can create. Now, this is all just B, A, and G, right? So I have, um, I basically just printed out as many cards as I want and I put them in this deck. There are other cards that I can put in with more tricky notes, with more tricky um, combinations, but this gives them a lot of different combinations. And what I do is that I do this the first time where I show them how it works, I walk them through and I do it. And then the second class period where I pull this out like as a warm up for class, I let a student come and make all the choices for row one and then all the choices for row two. It's really fun if you let a student make all the choices for like row one, they've gone through, we've gone through the process, we played, we did everything. And then instead of choosing a new kid to come up and do just line two, I choose a new kid to come up and change something about what the original kid did. So they can choose a different card from here and make changes up here. That's really fun to do too. But this gives you infinite possibilities. There are four rows here on just this task card with different colors and different combinations. Down here at the very bottom it says purple, yellow, you choose, and then pink. So the you choose means they get to choose any card of any color that they want to go in that you choose spot. Now you can use the task card. There are multiple task cards. There's task card one, task card two, task card three, etc. cetera. Um, and, but you could also just give kids the small elements and say no four colors in a row or no three colors in a row or whatever. And you could let them, without the task card, come through and sort of make their own thing, which is also super exciting to do. Then once kids are like used to this, I do at least two or three times. Um, let me see if I can switch back to my main view here. And switch back here. Once I do two or three times with um, kids trying through with the task cards, then um, I'll put it in a center. And so in a small group of usually about two or three kids, I'll give them a task card and a bag of cards. And not all the bags of cards, I usually go through and just cut up and I don't give them all the exact same cards. I make sure there's at least one of each color. Um, usually two of each color, but at least one of each color. And then kids can go through and take this process. And because we already did it in a large group and I already demonstrated how it should go and I already like showed them exactly like what it looks like when I'm doing it, they should know the process and they should be able to go through and be like, sure, I can be successful right away because we've done this before. Only now I have full charge 
I, I fully am in charge of what we get to do. And maybe they let, you know, in a group, a small group of two or three, maybe I'd model and say like one kid gets to choose row one and then another kid choose row two or whatever. But they know to go through that process. They always read the rhythm, then they add the note names, then they do the finger practice, then they play. And that's always the process as we go through. So kids, they like this. It's it's great to start out as a whole group thing where like all of the all of the process of, of going through and playing it is on me. And then when it's their turn in centers, they've already seen me do it a couple times. I've pulled one or two kids to come up and do it in front of the class one or two times. And then they're able to try it on their own um, in small groups and they feel real successful. It usually works pretty well. I see a couple people on Facebook have said they've already used this resource before and it's it's worked pretty well. The kids have enjoyed it. It, it does seem to work um, pretty well, but I would say that the thing that makes it work the best is when you model it and show it and try it out. And like that thing, like I said, it's called a think aloud when you go through and say, Hmm, well, I think I might choose this green card first because it starts on B and I like starting on B. Or even you say like, you know what? I'm just like, I'm going to try and choose a tricky one. So I'm going to do the one that goes B, A, G. Ooh, that seems tricky. I want to play that. You know, to show kids why you're making the choices you make, Kids really like that and it really helps them sort of understand what choice they might make and why they might do that. Um, but but this gives them a lot of choices without giving them a lot of choices. You know, it's it is a scaffolding. I'm only giving them cards with B, A, and G, all pretty simple rhythms. I know all the task cards. They should be able to go through and do that pretty easily and match all of that pretty quickly. So um, I, I know that kids are going to be pretty successful, but they feel like they have lots and lots of choices. Like they get to make all these choices when really I have preset choices for them. That's just scaffolding. Okay, this is one resource you can use with Recorder. It's really great when you're first starting out when kids want a little bit more autonomy, but really they don't have the skills to do like a lot of full things on their own. This does give them some... Um, some more choice and some more freedom without um, like throwing them completely to the wind. Um, but it's a really fun resource. I call this Jigsaw Melodies. I put a link to it on the links page. Um, if you're interested, you can check that out if you want. Before I go, let me show you the technology that works so well. No, it did not work so well tonight. I'm so very sorry, Facebook, that some of the sound didn't work for a while. Thanks for sticking around. Um, so basically what I learned during COVID times was I want something that I can use to like take a picture of my um, desktop. And a lot of times I like using a phone, my phone, a phone, an iPad or whatever uh, to be able to do that. But this is something, it's just basically a swing arm. Um, it's like if you took one of those uh, swing arm um, lamps, like the Pixar little, you know, the Pixar lamp, the little guy that jumps around. Only on one side there is a, like a cradle, a catch part for like an iPhone or Galaxy, but whatever phone you want. They do make adapters for iPads. And the other side is a clamp that clamps onto a desk. And like food bloggers use these all the time to position their phone right above the baking space that they want um, to like photograph or video or whatever. Um, so like YouTubers, food bloggers, TikTok people, they have these. Um, but also it works really well if you want to use it for like a document camera. So if you want, if you're able to like mirror your phone up onto your screen or your iPad, um, this really does help and it is very, very sturdy. The problem with mine tonight was I used an old phone that I had not tried in a long time and it just, the screen kept shutting off and the sound was weird. I'm so sorry about that. But it, this does work really well. And I love to also use this if I'm taking pictures of something, like an example I want students to see. If I want to like document a process, like I might go through this process that I just did and showed you. If I want like a quick recap to put in a center or or if there's a substitute teacher and I want to like leave a video of me doing it, this is really, really helpful. I'll put a link to this on the links page. It's not there yet, but I'll put it there in the next 10 minutes. Anyway, I hope this was sort of valuable to see like how you might do this if you want to just get one more resource for like what you could use with recorders. Um, this is a really fun thing for, for like I said, beginning um students who are beginning with recorder and then as they get better you can add more difficult cards you can add um, more levels of things that they can do with the cards so that then when they are in centers and they're like well i've already done this like ooh, but there's an added challenge because now you have low e low d or whatever um, you can give them more challenges that way 
Okay, well, thanks for sticking around with me tonight. It, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you are in Austin, Texas or near there, I'm going to be doing a workshop with the Capital Area ORF uh, chapter in Austin this Saturday from 9 to 1. So I hope you'll come join us. Um, and like I said, you don't have to just be from Austin. You could be from San Antonio. You could be from, you could drive from El Paso. I don't know. I know that's a long drive, but come join us. We're going to have so much fun this Saturday, 9 to 1. Um, anyway, thanks so much for coming along. I hope that uh, you learned something tonight and um, I will see you all next week. Bye everyone.